Thank you also from my side. And yeah, every crisis is specific, at least in some aspects, but there are also lessons to be learned. And the question is, where do we go from here? And what are the opportunities that the DFG can offer? For some conclusions and for an outlook, I would like to welcome Professor Britta Siegmund. She is a medical director at the Berlin Charité and vice president of the DFG since 2019. She is also a member of the DFG's Commission for Pandemic Research. Good afternoon, Britta Siegmund. Good to have you here. So, what are your main impressions from today? Where do we go from here? Thank you for the for the kind introduction. It's my <clears throat> it's my pleasure to provide a brief summary and conclusion and maybe outlook. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Go Very good. To today's um, meeting, um, I, I think we. We, we had, I think it's noteworthy that over 300 people registered for today's meeting and when I joined the plenary session this morning, over 250 were already locked in. So I think this is already a first indicator that there has been and is still a huge interest in, in this topic. And Katja Becker, the president of the DFG, provided the welcome speech and basically came to the point within the first sentences by outlining that we need space for all researchers, so for all fields of research within the pandemic. And making two points here, the first one that the pandemic has been a major trigger of multidisciplinary research activities on the one hand, and on the other hand, there also has never been a more urgent need for cross-border academic activities. The second point, an interesting point I think she made is that um, research is key to preparedness, and that, this is a word we then had, we then heard numerous times uh, over, over today. Um, but this, at the same time, underlines the need for curiosity-driven research, and she has, she has, of course, uh, named the example of uh, the RNA vaccine that originates not in infectious disease, but in the cancer field. And with BioNTech, obviously, is, an, is, an, is, an, is a brilliant example, in particular due to the fact that DFG has been funding the initial work in the cancer field. And Katja Becker concluded by saying that there will be more open research questions, and I think this became clear throughout the day that there are many more questions to be answered. And of course, the DFK funding portfolio offers a multitude of possibilities for uh, single or even network um, activities and initiatives here. And then we have this really uh, outstanding talk by Sir Jer Jeremy Farrar from Welcome, who first of all emphasized that Welcome uh, is an independent funding organization very similar to, to the DFG. And he, he, he challenged by saying that the pandemic is reflecting the challenges of our society in the 21st um, century. And this, and we, we've touched on this in the, uh, during the panel discussion just a couple of minutes ago, this includes not only viral pandemics, this also includes climate changes, environmental changes, travel, trade, geopolitics, and only interdisciplinary work is, is able or will be able to overcome these challenges. And this goes, as I said, well beyond the pandemic. And but this also emphasized, not surprisingly, the need and the importance of curiosity-driven research, and uh, which is supported by Welcome as well as by the DFG. And uh, remarkably enough, he named the same example, BioNTech, and uh, and very similar to what Katja Becker did. And, but he said, I think the key point here was that this, the curiosity-driven research is key for whatever crisis comes next. And what I, what I found interesting, he concluded with four points. And I think they are worth being named again. And the first one was, what you have before a crisis is what you have for fighting it. The second was being, and we discussed this in the, in the second point in the panel discussion, Trust in science is key, and trust in science by society and also by politics. And the curiosity-driven research is uh, certainly a long-term investment. And the last point, and I think this became clear during the discussion of the third point in the panel discussion, we need to identify the gaps after the crisis 
and reform and start the reforming now since this is the time for changes. Once we are back in normal life and the crisis is over, nobody will think of the, of the gaps. So we need to address them uh, now. Having had those two brilliant talks, uh, we came to the discussion forum, um, an exchange in eight thematically clustered rooms, um, resulting from not only but predominantly from seven focus funding calls by the DFG over the last uh, 18 months. Uh, consisting of 51 funded projects. And the, the topics have been selected by the already introduced DFG Pandemic Commission. And um, the topics reached from virus specific topics with regard to sequencing, immunology, pathomechanisms, over measures to prevent infections, um, impact of pandemic on the global south, educational processes. We've discussed this also in a panel discussion, aerosol distribution, and finally, exploiting spatial data as a basic basis for decision making as part of pandemic control. The, I think as a summary, um, she did her whole the discussions mm -hmm. became clear during the discussions in the different classes, it became clear that there is an immense interest in continuing research on this topic, which is very good. There is, as pointed out already by Katja Becker in the, in the morning, there is a huge interest in interdisciplinary and international collaborations. And, and I think everybody agreed that the, the pandemic has been a major trigger for this. Remarkably enough, the discussions came also back to the topics raised by, uh, by Jeremy Farrar um, with regard to climate, that there are thematic connections to the grand challenges with regard to climate migration, inequality, environmental changes, and that we need to address those, those points and so that the curiosity-driven research will prepare, will provide us better preparedness for the next global uh, crisis. And an interesting aspect during the discussion was also that um, it's a challenge to do research on a moving target. And I think probably many targets are moving on the research we are doing, but probably rarely a target is moving so quickly. And this, I think, is the particular point here. The need for future funding was expressed as well, and uh, uh, and I think I'd like to emphasize here by, by the words Katja Becker said in the morning that the DFG really offers a funding portfolio that includes a multitude of formats that can, that can address those uh, needs. With this, we came to the final discussion over the last uh, hour, trying to focus on a national view. I have to admit, I think we we went beyond uh, borders here, and it was led by Marco Finetti and uh, Marilyn Addo, Ralf Haider, Cornelia Beach, and Kolda Artelt contributed to addressing three important points. The first one, the impact and significance of the pandemic for science and research on one hand, and about the contribution of those two fields to cope with the pandemic. And I think we've identified the gaps in the, in the discussion and, and, and also appreciated um, the, the positive outcomes and, and the contribution of science here. The second point, and I think this will remain a hot topic, and I think we really need to identify the gaps here and, and draw our conclusions what we need to learn here to improve this probably prospectively. Um, is the interaction of science, politics, and society. And Fermi, Jeremy Farah said this morning, we need to trust here, uh, and we might need in Germany different, um, different um, um, structures, maybe something similar as SAGE uh, uh, in, the, in the UK. And lastly, we touched on the preparedness. The next global crisis is sure to come. I'm not sure it will really be a viral virus. I think as pointed out by, by Sherry Farah again, um, there are several challenges in the world uh, facing our society. So I think preparedness in the broad field of, of, uh, of science is well, well justified. And, and as we just discussed, I think we need to identify the, guess, the gaps and we need to start the reforms now in order to do better the next time and, and to learn from this, from this crisis. Um, with this, I can only say that I enjoy today's talks, discussions immensely, and I would like to thank everyone for participating today and by this enabling this interdisciplinary exchange that hopefully 
will result in novel projects that might broaden our preparedness for the next challenges to come. And with this, I would like to hand over back to the DFG head office in Bonn, to Anne Brüggemann and Marco Finetti. Thank you so much for this perfect summary of the day um, and for this perspective and motivating conclusion. Our conference is now coming to an end. I would also like to thank all the participants very much for your active contribution. Without this day, could not have succeeded. Also, many people at the head office of the DFG have worked very hard for, for today. And I would like to take the opportunity now to especially thank my colleague Jennifer Gronau, who is in the back of this uh, room today. And uh, many thanks to you, Jennifer, for making this possible. Um, the platform remains open until Friday 6 p.m. So please, you have the opportunity to revisit the platform, especially uh, the recordings of the um, uh, opening speech of Katja Becker, the keynote, the panel you just saw, and uh, also the summary of uh, Britta Siegmund. So uh, it's all there. You can go back to it and use it. Now, to all the others, have a good evening. Continue with your successful research and goodbye. <laughs>